All right, everybody, please welcome back the four aces to live golf, Las Vegas, 2024. We are joined by the newest member of the four aces, Harold Varner III. Made a great Quit presentation last week. Patrick, <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Reed, our captain, Dustin Johnson, and Pat Perez. Welcome, guys. We'll start with the obvious question, DJ and Harold. Tell us how this off-season trade and transfer to four aces came about. I'll start with you, DJ. Um. I was at Dick's Sporting Goods buying some stuff for the kids, and Colin was with me. I was actually shooting uh, something for perfect practice, but while I was there, I was like, I need to run in and grab some stuff. So he got Colin got a call from uh, Richard Marsh, and I, I never – this was pretty late, too, in December. But um, got a call. And they, because we weren't really thinking about trading anybody, but they said, Do you want to trade uh, Pete for Harold? And I was like, I seem to want it. So, yeah. Well, I didn't really want to, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 understandable <laughs> after last week. Oh, <laughs> uh, but I was like, sure. So I, and then that's how, it's really how it came about. I was, it wasn't really any. Anything more to it than that? Yeah. Because <laughs> 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 Colin said, would you trade Pete for Harold? I was like, Sure. I don't know. Man, I need to play better. Hey, yeah. Tell us how it went on your end. <laughs> uh, so for me, I was at a tonsil me, whatever you call it, where they take your tonsils out. Um, and I was recovering, so I couldn't talk. And um, I got the phone call, and I was like, yeah, I'd love to play for the Aces. Um, obviously, I'd love to play better for them, but it's early. Uh, yeah, super excited. It's not, it's, not, it's not that big of a deal. We still got to play golf. We got to play well. And you know, I, I I really like these guys. They they're heckling me right now, so uh, I'm ready for the week to start, so I can like redeem myself some way somehow. I love it. So thank you. You had a great week last week, Patrick. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't close to money. Yeah, it was pretty good till the last yeah. hole. Oh, the last yeah. hole. What'd you do in the last hole? Made yeah. seven. Yeah. seven with no penalty. Yeah, with no penalty. Hit all of them. <laughs> I I watched them all. I didn't even make a triple. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your off season and your preparation heading into this year. You were really close to winning a couple times last year. Do you think you can close that door this year? Yeah, you no, know. I mean, no, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I got to get all my shots while I can. It's, yeah. it's just like yeah. unload on right yeah. now. It's gonna be a fun year. It's gonna be hundred percent. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean the preparation was the same as every year. You know, go out and grind and uh, you know. The only difference is this year with having a longer off season, I was able to spend a lot more time with the kids and kind of be a dad, which was a lot of fun. And uh, then, you know, get back to work and just kind of fine tune some things to try to get in the winter circle. Uh, you know, it's, it's annoying being out here fresh in second, third, fourth, fifth every week. And, uh, you know, always looking at the top of the individual rankings and seeing everyone around me all have wins. And, you know, me being that one guy that has, uh, has zero wins, but a lot of good finishes. So, yeah, I feel like the game's trending where it needs to be and just, uh, you know, go out and kind of take that momentum into this year and hopefully uh, get in that circle not just once but a couple times. Okay. You, a little bird told me that you didn't really pick up your clubs much this off season, but you had a really strong start last week. Is Are you just that good? And if you had put in work in the off season, so, you think so you would have won the first helps. event? <laughs> uh, I mean, would it could have should always is it golf, but – um. I spent a lot of time at home and with the kid. Not much time at the golf course, yes. But, um, I mean, sometimes it's good to take some time off. And I, mean, I practiced a little bit right before we went to Mexico. And then I worked, so pretty, I worked pretty hard in Mexico, though, at the game. But, um, I mean, I was pretty surprised with my finish last week. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was happy with it. But the game, I, I mean, to be honest, it – during the week, I practiced hard. You know, where I thought would actually I'd be a little rusty was the short game of putting, but, you know, put in some time and, you know, everything felt good and obviously got off to a nice start the first day, which always helps and, you know, kind of kept it going. Um, you know, just obviously the second day I didn't, you know, play good. It was tough conditions. Just, uh, you know, every time I just was barely missed a shot, it seemed like it went into the wrong spot and, he played. He played great. I mean, what else? What are we gonna talk? About? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 
Um, he saw but it's time to grind yeah. now, though. Looking forward to this year. And, uh, you know, I'm happy with our team. I think, you know, obviously last week was not a very good reflection of the talent that's on this team and how we're going to perform this year. But um, sure I think moving forward, <laughs> moving forward, we better, we well, we can't get any worse. So <laughs> we're definitely going to do better this week. Pat, we are in Las Vegas, which I know you spent a lot of time here. How excited are you to be having a tournament in Vegas with Liv? And then do you have any experience with this golf course? I played about 20 years ago. Uh, I don't remember too much of it. It was kind of short and straight. Um, I'm excited to be here. I'm not actually staying on the strip this week because too much temptation. So I'm going to stay away from it until Saturday night. And uh, we'll see. It'll probably be the longest for sure. I haven't. Are we going to quit? Found trouble. Bush. Huh? I, I mean, this team, is, we've been dealt a great hand, a lot of adversity this Just off season. Seven. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Like, we, we, we got a great opportunity to, like, overcome something in our lives, everyone here, and we're going to support our people, and I'm looking really forward to that. Like, that excites me. And, um, yeah, you know, things happen. We're going to be, we're going to be better from it. I love it. I'm going to pass it over to Mike over there. So how shocked were you about the team result last week, or did you feel like, come on, Mike, we're trying to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to seeing the Aces 12th. Come on now. Darling, it's first week. It's first week. Me neither. It's a season yeah. for a reason. I can't dwell on it. It's over. I, I assume if there's any team that can get past a result like that quickly. We had one of those last year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Tucson, yeah, right? That one last year. Was it Tucson? Tucson, maybe. Oh, no, like Greenbrier. Yeah. That was early. Greenbrier. Wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's sometimes. It's an off week. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's an off week. And two, and with the new, obviously the new scoring system, you know, you need all four guys playing well. And even with counting three scores, you still want all four guys playing well. Um, you know, last week, obviously, to the golf course is, you know, for for first week out is is pretty challenging especially you know it's very very narrow and you know you can just barely miss shots when you're penalized no the whole kidding time. so uh but yeah i don't think i don't think last week is we're not too worried about it that's for sure and and uh, patrick got you you've been talking about how you wanted to get off to great starts uh that had been a kind of an issue the last yeah. two years it's like you a, get off to a, a great crash start, burn the last so. two days but yeah. you get out to 64, and you still find yourself five shot behind the lead. So what was yeah. your mindset after that first day? Well, I mean, well, mindset obviously didn't work. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, really for me, I haven't really had that much success there at Mayakoba. I've played back there at the PGA Tour, and yeah, it's just one of those golf courses that I feel like I'm dropping on every hole. I barely you know, miss a shot, and next thing you know, I'm taking a penalty drop, and then I hit you know a couple loose ones. Just, yeah, so that was actually probably one of the better finishes I've had there. And, um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that getting off to that seven under start, it felt, it felt good. And obviously you had a guy go out there and shoot 59, Yako. I mean, there's nothing you can do there. And so, incredible. yeah. And you knew the weather was going to turn the weather was going to get nasty and you just had to, you know, keep plugging along. And, uh, you know, unfortunately it went from hitting almost every fairway the first day to basically missing every fairway the next two. And, you know, I mean, went out there and, you know, got home, talked to the coach, and we kind of went through game plan. Game feels fine. It's just a couple of loose shots at the wrong times of that golf course, which will do it. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's last week. We're glad to get that one out of the way. Uh, like I said, just don't really like that place. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to a new one. All right. And like I said, it can only get better from here. I, I did want For some. <laughs> I did want to ask the rest of you about the four rounds counting uh, this season, obviously, new change in the format. Uh Pat, what did you think of that? I like it. I like yeah. it all four. A lot of things can change on that last day. Yeah. I think for a real team concept, anyway, all scores should count for – if you're going to find the best team, then you need all four scores count. That's how I see it. So, I like the change. Oh, I, get, I do too. I think it's great. I think, you know, it puts pressure on everyone on Sunday, whether you're whether you're up around the lead or, or you're not. Because if your team's up around the lead, like, you know, you have to perform well. And two, you know – a 10 shot lead with four scores counting is not a lot. Right. So, you know, you could have a team way out front and easily get caught. I mean, that you can catch them in two holes, you know, so with four scores counting, it's not, 
it's not a whole lot of, you know, so I think that makes it for, you know, it's going to be very interesting this year. And, you know, everyone's got to play well on Sunday if you want a chance to win. You feel like it's an advantage for the Aces, given how experienced and deep you guys are? No, if it's an advantage, but it's, we like it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a, obviously there's a lot of good teams, you know, so, um, you know, if we want to win, we've got to play really well. And then my last question, just about being here in Vegas during Super Bowl week, how much of a opportunity do you think Liv has as a as a lead to kind of shine this week? We have a big opportunity. Um, yeah, you're talking about a bunch of people in Vegas. They'll be able to come out, and hopefully, yeah, that trickle down effect. You'll have more fans come out and experience what uh, Liv's about. And I mean, we're in Vegas already electrified then you have the super bowl on top of it you know and then now you come to a place that we you know we preach uh golf but louder and i mean you have a lot of loud events going on around here and i feel it'll be big for us i feel like you're gonna get a lot of fans come out who come in early for the super bowl and all those festivities and they'll trickle down come watch some of the best golfers play and uh you know hopefully the aces we do what we're supposed to do, go out and play the golf we're supposed to and have a chance to hold that trophy at the end appreciate it Vince. DJ, um, a question for you. Um, can you tell golf viewers, and we have kind of a general lifestyle golf series that runs a lot across the country, so it'll be after the event and whatnot, but tell golf viewers why this is must-see pro golf in your mind. Um, I mean, it's, it's professional golf. It's, you know, some of the best players in the world. I think it, it's a little bit, you know, different than obviously the – you know, obviously it's different than the PGA Tour. Now we have teams, but yeah, I think the fan experience here is is a lot more fun. I think the player experience is more fun. You know, it's just a little bit, you know, got the music out on the range, some music out on the course. It's just, it's kind of, it's just trending to where golf is, is going right now, I think. Um, you know, when you're at home playing with your buddies and, you know, you got your music on your you know as, as you're having a good time i think that's what lives all about but yes we are out here competing and you know at a very high level but you know you can still enjoy yourself while you're doing that well and the thing the thing that i i, I notice is that we we watch you guys that's why we enjoy the game and also the places and taking the golf around the world taking us to places we haven't seen like seeing a tournament here again which is the nostalgia Describe for the viewers what, you know, what the quality of the players here, the, the guys they know, the accomplished players, and what, what it's like to be a part of that for you guys. Well, it's great. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, it's still really new. I mean, we're only, what, three tournaments? 23, yeah, it's our 23rd tournament. So it's still really new. It's, you know, the, the quality of golf, though, is I think is exceptional. Um, the competition is exceptional. And, you know, you, you've got to, like, for me, if I want to come out here and win, I've got to play at my best. And, you know, obviously the the fields just – the fields keep getting stronger. Teams are getting stronger. The golf's getting better. You know, I think, you know, obviously everyone – I would I would invite everyone to come out and watch and just experience for yourself before you make a, before you make a decision on it without actually being here. Harold, I wanted to ask you um, – as, as it relates to uh, the game, 54 holes, so you might have a final stretch that's the toughest scoring holes out there. What about the strategy and the different aspects of the way you approach it? And then maybe you're back five or six strokes or whatever, and you know you gotta you got to compete for your team and you got to take some risks. Do you, do you go shot by shot, or do you, do you change a little bit of the strategy with your caddy in, in that aspect? Um, I don't because I'm obviously not that smart to know where someone else is on the course. But uh, for me, I think it's hard to do, but you just try to do one shot at a time and uh, do what you're doing and see how it pans out. Um, when you're playing like I played last week, you, you don't really – it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, you just do your job and, like, play golf and you have to get as many looks as you can and see where it ends up, you know. Uh, at the song that – comes to mind is the Kitty Rogers song in The Gambler you know like you just got to know when to hold them and when to fold them and it's 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 true in golf and 
I don't think it really matters. I think it's really cool. Everyone's on the course at the same time. You finish. There's just it's just way. I think it's cool. I, some people don't like it. Fifty four holes. I mean, for four million dollars, I'd play as many holes as you need me to play to get four million dollars. <laughs> so um, it's pretty simple for me. Um, some people might think differently, but yeah. Okay, remember that. Donnell Thomas, CDL Cigar and Golf. Uh, this question is for HV3. Uh, being a, a Akron kid, playing your college golf at East Carolina, how has it been getting to this professional level and being able to go back into your neighborhood and go back to your old school and, and give back to those people? And anybody can answer this for that matter. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, I wouldn't be here without certain people that helped me, and I think it's an integral part of your life to have mentors, and that's what we're doing. I don't think you should get a pat on the back for doing that. I just think it's the right thing to do. It costs a lot of money, and uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty simple. Does it? You know, I, I don't have this like feel good thing. I just think it's the right thing to do. And if you can do that every day, I think. I don't know. I don't think too much of it, honestly. Well, I think that's the biggest thing with live is because of what we're playing for, because of how much we're being able to earn, but also with having a lighter schedule, it gives us that time to give back and actually make a difference. Absolutely. And. I think that's the biggest thing for me is it's, you know, when I was on the PGA Tour, I was on the other tours because of how many events I played. I could, of course, I could financially help people out, but I couldn't really give my time. I didn't have time. So now having the time, you can actually make that difference and not just write a check. You can be there to help and, and actually make the difference. I think that's the biggest thing is actually making the effort to make a difference. A great follow-up to that. You guys are about to head over to do an impact activation here at Live uh, Las Vegas. You guys are going to be meeting with students from the University of Las Vegas who just suffered a tragedy. You guys are also going to be meeting with some disadvantaged youth from the area. Tell us what that means to you guys to be able to use this platform to give back while you're on site. I'll start with you, Pat. Yeah, I've done a lot of that. It's, um, it's, uh, it feels good you know, to be able to... You know, talk to people that have gone through some uh, hard times or, you know, just, you know, I've had a lot of hard times, you know, through my life. And, uh, you know, you hopefully run to people that can help you with it. And, um, you know, if you, can, if you can help someone out in any situation like that, it's, it feels great. You, whether or not you think you made an impact or not, if they take something from it, it's, it's phenomenal. DJ? Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I think it's a, it's a big part of what we do. Um, you know, I, I do my own, I have my own foundation that we do a lot of work with underprivileged kids. And so um, I think, not not saying that that's what we're going to do now, but I think any time you can, you can, you have the time to go and help, help some people or talk to them, or you might, you might, uh, you never know what you're going to be able to do or accomplish. So, um, and you never know what someone's going through, you know, just a few words that you say to them could, could change their, change their life or change their day. You know, it's it's always it's always a good thing, and it's it's positive to to give back. Yeah, we appreciate you guys giving back to the local community. I'm gonna do one more, and then we gotta get you over there. I got a couple of questions. First one, Harold, where'd you get the shoes, dude? Because those are cool. Well, thank you. Uh, this guy, this uh, Jordan brand, they send them to us, and uh, they were. It was in my room. And You're I'm styling, sure. brother. Thank it's you. Good. Appreciate it. You guys are all great, but I want to find out. A lot of ink being written about John Rom, rightfully so. What does John bring to the tour as a whole, do you think? You want me to go? Oh. I mean, it's pretty simple. He's one of the best players in the world. That's it, and final and all. Like, we need is the best players we can get because that's how the league's going to propel itself is if the best players are playing. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know how else to explain it. I mean, he's really fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that, I mean, I'm just, I'm serious. Like that's that's his attribute to the league because with the better players that come, that makes the league more legit. You know, I, I don't know. All right, that, that's that's a surprise. Would you agree with me that most of the people that, in my opinion, that knock the live tour are conventional golfers, old school, fifty-four holes, music, shorts, that type of thing. Because they didn't grow up playing golf that way. Would you agree with me that that group has the the biggest amount of criticism of the Live Tour? Well, they grew up playing that way. They're not used to watching it that way. Right. I mean, they're, and if you want to go one step farther, they grew up riding around in a golf cart in shorts with a beer in their hand, playing golf and taking a breakfast ball off the first tee. I see it every week. 
But um, the biggest thing is I feel like the people that are knocking on it is because they haven't actually come out and experienced it. And the reason that is, is, I mean, people don't like change. You know, you start making a ripple into anything and, and instead of actually sitting back and, and thinking about it and having a clear head on it, the first thing is knee, knee jerk reaction. I don't like it. No, I don't want to deal with it. And so I feel like the more they come out, the more they see and, and they understand that, you know, I mean, you go to, there's room for both. There's that traditional 72 holes, tee times where you go to the golf course at four in the morning and you watch guys warm up. You can stay till dark. And then, I mean, you need a faster paced because times these days, everything's moved faster. Well, you have a 54 holes shotgun starts, so everything turns into a sprint. And it's just trying to evolve golf into a uh, more faster paced and kind of more with the times. And but there's definitely room for both. And I feel like people need to come out and actually experience that rather than have that knee jerk. 100%. Every guest I have on my show, I we talk about live tour. And if they knock it a little bit, I said, I'll bet you dollars to donuts. You've never been to a live event. Am I right? And they go, right. I think. Uh, I said, when you go to one, you'll be singing a different tune. Come back and talk to me. I think that, I, I mean, I get where you're coming from, but I think a lot of the noise and all the smoke is from people that are, that, because it's funny, the, the businessmen and the people in the world that actually run the world don't, don't say that stuff. It's the people that, like are obviously with the media like if you actually go sit at a country club and you talk about it they'll be like that's the best business decision you ever made you just thought those people are in the media so you don't hear it so i think there's a lot of talk about all this and that i think at the end of the day the only person that it hurts is the fan because the best players aren't playing together um like if we were honest with ourselves we would sit here and we would critique it and be like yeah it's cool there's two different tours but like not that many people are watching golf like, let's just get down to the basics of it like we were trying to run these things and it's just not going to work because there's not that many people watching, you know, it's that we're not the NFL. You can't, if you split the NFL, you would still have two amazing leagues. Um, so if, if we sit here and we're just like talking about it, like it sucks for the fan. I love it for the money. So like, it's a tough, it's a tough decision, but when it comes like bare minimum, it's a great business decision. It sucks for the fan. And there's a lot of egos where they don't want to figure out like how what's best for golf. They don't because they, they're doing what we did, do what's best for us. So I think it's very hard. I think there's uh, there's more to it than just what this guy says on the like on your show. Like he he doesn't have a fucking clue. Like he has no idea. He he doesn't. He just thinks for himself. He's like, well, I don't like that. Like I just think, I think that that kind of, that bothers me because at the end of the day, it's golf. No one's gonna die. No one's gonna. It's just it's golf. It's not that important. It's fun. I enjoy being with these guys. You guys enjoy, t like, t watching us. But, like, it's golf. Like, let's just be real. Like, people are dying. Like, come on. So, I, I find that's a great question. But I just think that in the, in the grand scheme of things, that is – well, who cares what that guy said? Speaking of the NFL, just wanted to ask you guys, either of you guys going to the Super Bowl on Sunday, who's your team? I wish both of them could lose, but I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> It's the greatest sporting event in all of sports. Yeah, it is insane. Uh, I'm not going. I'm going home uh, to see the kids. Uh, oh, God. You're about to have three weeks off. You're not going to see the yeah, kids? No, well, I'm, I'm going to go home and see the kids. And uh, we got some things going on at the house. So I kind of want to get to the house yeah, Cute. quickly and, and deal with that. Thanks for taking it. Yeah, you're welcome. I will be going to the game. Um, who do I have? Not sure yet. I'm still working on it. You gotta go. Do I gotta, I gotta wait. I gotta wait till it's a little. Report. Yeah, I gotta wait till it gets a little closer to game time. It's we're too far away. Have you guys heard the, the history of this course? You know, John Daly's talked about how he'd go play money matches on this golf course and then go spend three million dollars in a casino. Like just the the stories and the history of this golf course. I mean, there's a lot of stories like that. Have you guys heard any of those? I've never come to Vegas to play golf. To be honest with you, so not really. Any of those are golf courses? Yeah, yeah we're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I used to come to hit balls at Butchie's, but that was usually for about an hour late in the afternoon. You did that today. So, all right, guys, we got to get you over to the kids. Thank awesome. you so much. Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate that question.